Hello and welcome to Ageless Rock, where megalithic fans can see impossible structures from another perspective. Yogyakarta is not just a special region of administration. It is a special region with lots of megalithic sites. Banyu Nibo Temple is a mysterious temple located in Java Island. It is believed to be constructed in the 9th century during the reign of Mataram Kingdom. Banyu Nibo is probably named after a nearby waterfall locally known as Ai Terjun Banyu Nibo. Banyu Nibo Waterfall is a famous tourist spot in Java where you can get local tours to reach there. Other sources say that when it was first discovered, the monument was in ruin and the roof was dripping with rainwater when it rains. Whatever it is, the only sure thing is that no one knows anything about this temple. This mysterious temple sits on Chepet hamlet of Sambirajo village for many centuries. There isn't any information available on who and how it was rediscovered. According to Cultural Heritage Preservation of Yogyakarta, this site was rediscovered as early as 1930. However, research began only in 1940. Excavation came to a halt due to Japanese invasion. It wasn't until 1976 that restoration for the roof began. What we see today is the result of reconstruction that was completed in 1978. Banyu Nibo Temple is considered a Buddhist temple. It rises to the height of 14.25 meters, which is also the same as the depth of the temple. The temple is 15.325 meters wide. The roof is very unique because it is very plain and simple with a curve. It is very different compared to others because they usually come with lots of small stupas and carvings. The roof is 2.75 meters high and a 3.5 meter stupa sits on top of it making the entire roof 6.25 meters high. This will explain why you might get different numbers from different sources. Because of the design of the roof, which is simply a flat surface with a curve, rainwater will flow to the top of the platform. On each side of the platform, except the front, there is a Jala Dwara. This Jala Dwara with Makara design is like a spout where water from the platform tends to flow to, causing water to flow out like a spout. From my understanding, it is like a leaky faucet when it rains. So that comes with the naming of this temple called Banyu Nibo. While Banyu Nibo waterfall can be a thunderous flow, the Jaladora in Banyu Nibo temple is only meant to mean dripping water in Javanese language. If you are a fan of waterfall, Banyu Nibo hike is definitely a must in your bucket list. This temple has a strange layout to me. There are six structures in total ruin. Typically, they are made up of Bawara temples. However, at Banyu Nibo, it is two paths, three on the east side and three on the south side. On the north side, there might be another three waiting to be excavated. The stone blocks are still buried under one meters of soil. On the north side, it seems there is a wall that runs 63 meters long. I guess we will have to wait for further excavation before anyone knows anything about the wall. But I want to draw your attention to the first perimeter wall. It seems like there is a pattern where the grand design is about 48 to 50 meters from the first wall. Let's look at other temples in Java. Sari Temple Laosan Temple Sambisari Temple and Ijo Temple. What are the odds that they all must have the first wall about 48 to 50 meters? I am just using Google Map to get the measurement, but if measured on the ground level, they might show the exact same length. I wonder if there is a sacred geometry knowledge to this. As you enter the temple, 
there is an interesting relief on the left that shows Goddess Hariti. According to Buddhism, devotees worship her for blessings and protection of children and therefore well-being of family. However, Hariti is also from Hinduism. She is from a giant race known as Raksashi. She lived during the time of Gautama Buddha. Devi Hariti was originally a man-eating demon. In Javanese legend, she had 1,000 children. Buddhism in China has it that she had 500 children. As a man-eating Raksasha demon, she must catch humans to feed her 1,000 man-eating children. The local villagers panicked and asked Buddha for help. When Buddha heard about it, he got angry and stole her youngest son and hid him under his rice bowl. Demon Hariti became worried and asked Buddha to help find her missing son. Buddha asked Demon Hariti what is her problem. Only one child is missing. She still had many, but Hariti said she cannot live with that. Buddha asked her, what about the humans she has been eating? One person missing is a lot of pain to the entire family. Hariti realized the pain she had caused and promised not to eat humans again. She fed her children with pomegranate instead. Buddha gave back her son and gave her the Bodhi or enlightenment. She is now worshipped as goddess for protector of children, fertility, easy childbirth, blessings for a happy family and all the good things you want for your family. In China, Hariti is also known as Demon Mother. That is why in Mandarin, she is written as Gui Zi Mu, which means Ghost Mother. This is also a story of good over evil, where in the spiritual realm, even the demon can switch side. This might explain why Hinduism, Buddhism and Jainism are religion of peace. They even make friends with demons. Let's explore a little bit on the spiritual side at Banyu Nibo Temple. There are many Javanese shamans and spiritualists who can communicate with the guardians of these ancient temples. These shamans and spiritualists in Java will tell you a different story where the presence of the spirit of Hariti is very strong at the center of the temple. A visit to this temple at night with a shaman will give you a completely different story and even a different history. When the spiritual world and the physical world collides, our brain fails to process the information. Although this is officially a Buddhist temple, there are bull nandis excavated as well. It is quite puzzling to me that Buddhists would want nandis in their temple. This will be another case where archaeologists will say Buddhists and Hindus live in harmony. But if they both can carve, I'm pretty sure they will carve their own temples side by side. The main temple is open for tourists decades ago, but the excavation is far from over. There is still a lot to dig and it seems like there is no shortage of new information to keep everyone busy. I am not sure if Banyu Nibo name comes from a dripping roof or dripping jaladwara or nearby waterfall or simply means drinking water. But I can assure you, a megalithic temple at sunset or sunrise is always an awesome sight to see. This will wrap up my presentation on Banyu Nibo Temple. Hope you enjoy my short presentation and see you next time. Sekian, jumpa lagi.